Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Broke Gamers Podcast. I'm Ricky. I'm Steve. Yeah, back in the grind. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. I know. It's been uh, almost uh, half a month already. Gosh, do people still say Happy New Year after like a couple of weeks in? Ah, when it's the first time seeing somebody, I guess. Uh, I guess, who knows. Whatever, you know, Happy New Year's to uh, everybody out there. Hopefully you're still listening to the show or seeing it maybe in the near future. Uh, We're getting some things working. Working on it. Yeah. But um, this show would not have video this this on because there's too many things going on. Well, we decided to split up the show because we ended the, the show at about the, uh, you know, the week of Steve's birthday. And it was like the week before Christmas. About a know. month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. And uh, a lot of things happened after we left. So we wanted to do this first half of the show of just the things that happened last year that we thought would be important to bring up. And then the next part of the show would be the New Year stuff. Yes. Well... The one thing that upset me the most when we finished our show last time was the fact that uh, Miyamoto was interviewed uh, by somebody. I don't even know who, what, where, when, and I don't even remember why. Uh, uh, that talked about the Amiibo. They asked him about the uh, Amiibo, you know, because Amiibo is contra- controversial because it, it can, it, it, it's cool. They're cool things. Um, but a lot of them can be rare, i.e. the Martha Amiibo, even though, you know, if you want to consider last year, last year Martha Amiibo was impossible to find, and if you wanted to pay for it, it's like 80 bucks or something like that. Now uh, some things are changing and everything else, you know, especially with this year. But going with last year, Miyamoto had started with the conversation of uh, if if anything, if they release new games that require like rare or discontinued Amiibo, they'll probably re-release them in card form, which... It just, if they're going to do that, I was like, well, why didn't they just do that in the first place? But then also, not only that, wouldn't just releasing a rare card just make it... I mean, excuse me, just to release a Amiibo card, wouldn't that just be a rare card and then that would be worth money? You know, not, that, a, well, not unless they release so many of these cards that everybody can have one. I guess. But I mean, but then again, how many cards do you really have? And then how, how much would oversaturate? You know, because how, how can you anticipate how many uh, units of a game that that Amiibo might use is going to sell if you're going to make too little or you're going to make too much, you know, that type of thing. Like, like how, how, what, what's too little, what's too little, what's too much, you know? And if, even if there's too little, then it's going to become rare. If it's too much, then it's like, well, why do you sell so many things? Nobody wants this Amiibo card, you know, that type of thing. Even though it's been revealed that this year that, you know, they, they, will be releasing uh, or re-releasing certain Amiibo. Like, they talked about the Marth Amiibo, and now the Marth Amiibo <laughs> is reduced in price significantly now, which I find Well, the hilarious. resale price, yeah. Yeah, at least the second-hand price, yes. Uh, but there's a... It, it's like people know that Amiibo are just being used to make money at, at this point. I, I go on Reddit, I go, like, everywhere, and I see just Amiibo just, like... It, it's just a thing that you buy to just resell later. But, Not always, I have mine to use them hell yeah i got one of mine to use i'm just gonna open all of them to say screw it you know i still haven't had the chance to just use them all yet because i just kind of haven't had a chance to really play uh smash uh wii u a lot but i still love it every time i play it well uh, i got my hands on a captain falcon nice and i uh i i'm not really a captain falcon player but it was one of those things that like it was destiny like thrown in my face so i had no choice but yeah because uh, basically all right i'll go into the story real quick yeah uh, I was at a this GameStop. This happened last year still, this, this so happened, technically. Right, right. This happened last year. I was at a GameStop, and the lady in front of me returned the ever-so-elusive Captain Falcon Amiibo, and so I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she just returned that? Throw that on my order. We're, we're buying that one right here. So. Yeah, and in all honesty, why not? I mean, that, uh, Captain Falcon's actually kind of rare. Luigi is too. Diddy Kong was rare for a moment, but I know they're reselling it now at regular price. Uh, and I know... Uh, uh, the Wii Fit Trainer and um, Animal, the, the Animal Crossing, the Villager. Villager. He's uh, that, they're actually both discontinued. I know more are going to be discontinued as more come out. Uh, so and then staying on Amiibo, I know Best Buy had teased that they're going to get more exclusives beyond just Meta Knight. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that, I guess. Interesting. Yeah. So that was the one main thing we uh, we wanted to talk about. Of course, um, everything else that happened, uh, Minecraft stuff. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Notch made big news because he bought, like, the most expensive house in Beverly Hills, like, $70 million. <laughs> well, when you have $2 billion from Microsoft alone, plus whatever you made off of Minecraft in the first place, yeah, you can afford a $70 million home. Yeah, you know, he's just, you know, I still love how uh, he was going to keep it mellow and keep making games, but at an indie level and, you know, kind of just relax and kick back. And that's just like, a ah, $70 million house. <laughs> Why not? He's got to like that. Yeah, it's uh, lucky him, right? 
Yeah, I mean, seriously. And then not only that, someone in Minecraft actually recreated his house. Which, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good thing, if that's creepy. I have no idea. Whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say about it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like that's what people do. Yeah, and then one last thing about Minecraft, at least for now anyway. We we have so many scattered things from uh, last year. Like Minecraft is actually going to have a uh, story mode from Telltale Games. <laughs> and uh cuz I guess people needed a uh, story of Minecraft. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that's uh, it's Minecraft. Yeah, uh Telltale Games, they've made uh, the Walking Dead series and 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 games like that. They're going to they partnered up with Mojang to make uh the Minecraft story mode. Um, what, what, like how that's going to work? I don't know, but maybe it's, I don't know. Cause I feel like, I find it weird. Minecraft is just one thing. Now you're going to have a story mode to it. I, I don't know. Well, in a way, I guess they already had a, a little bit of a, a survival mode. I guess you can create your own story, but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's whatever. I guess they're trying, you know what? They bought it for $2 million. They might as well try to do something with it, right? Two billion. Two billion excuse me. $2 billion. They might as well try to do something with it. That's true. Um, some news going back uh, to Nintendo a little bit. Uh, they're already uh, thinking about the uh, console ideas, but I guess it's at that at that phase that uh, you know you're going to start having to you know do all that, um, which is uh, I guess cool because I mean at this point you might you might as well start, especially how the Wii U is right now and it's very much very behind, <laughs> and they're already releasing the new 3DS, which is coming out uh, sh- very shortly actually. The 13th, yeah, February. February, yeah. Which we'll talk about that in our New Year stuff, but oh, yeah. sticking to last year, um, this was being brought up, and also Miyamoto had talked about, I believe, in the same interview, that um, there will be no other Mario game coming up for the Wii U uh, this this co- gener- this console generation. So if you got your you know new Mario 3D, um, I'm sorry, new Super Mario Bros. Wii U, and if you got your Mario 3D World, that's it. And I mean, not that they're bad games, but. I don't know. Uh, Miyamoto had discussed it. Um, he talked about how he basically viewed uh, Mario as a uh, as the Mickey Mouse of uh, Nintendo. Well, because he is. Yeah, and he always felt like. Well, he, here's here's the quote because I I don't want to misquote him. Since we first created Mario, people have compared him to Mickey Mouse. I've always said Mickey Mouse evolved e- with each evolution of animation. You saw Mickey Mouse each step of the way. From early on, I wanted Mario to be that character in the digital world. So that with each digital evolution, there was to usher the next era. Uh, I think that maybe when we release the next hardware system, you can look forward to seeing Mario taking a new role or in a new game. Yeah, that's uh, that's if he wants to do, then do it. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, honestly. Uh, Some other important things about Nintendo, because I just wanted to uh, get that out there. Uh, Miyamoto uh, talked about Zelda, and the main things about this, uh, especially the open world thing, (laughs) is the fact that... um, that the world can be affected by whatever you do in the game. So that's a little new, interesting concept, especially throwing into the Zelda series. Yeah, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of how this would... Uh, so you kill an NPC over there, something happens over here? Probably. I don't that know. Type of thing. And, and if that's the case, it might have a uh, an open-ended type of ending. Like, imagine there's multiple endings to that game instead of just one. Oh, then you have to play that game so many times to see them all. Yeah, I mean, if it's, you know, if, hey, if it's a good replay value, why not? If the game's that good to replay again. Like, because you, you, when you think of multiple ending games, I always think of Chrono Trigger. Like, you definitely wanted to st- hit every ending of that game. Okay. There was, a think, about 14 different endings to that game. Jeez. Yeah, I remember that. You get your basic one and you that's get one. That's too much, though. That's way too many endings, too much playing in a, of a game. Well, because you love the game, man. Yeah, but you can only play it so many times. Yeah, you you can play it a ton of times. There's people who played like games a hundred times. I think I've played like the original Mario Bros. like hundreds of times at this point. Yeah, but not an RPG like Chrono Trigger where it takes a long time. I couldn't say hundreds, but at least it's double digits uh, for certain RPGs like uh, like Chrono Trigger, um, Final Fantasy uh, Seven, uh, Six, even um, what other RPG Mario RPG I've played a lot. Uh, you know those type of games, but I really didn't. But after that, the RPG kind of like died out for me. But I don't know. But after like the SNES and PlayStation like times, there wasn't really a lot of RPGs that interested me after that. Yeah, I love Fire Emblem, but I can I can't play that game so many times like that. <laughs> like I, you know, I I, I keep you're all not, my same file. You're not file. a fan. No, no, no. I just keep playing my same file, leveling up my same units to become unbeatable online. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> well, that's just what I do. All my stuff's yeah. over three hundred, whatever, and leave me alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
um, some technical stuff about Nintendo. We've talked about this before about the patenting cases that uh, Nintendo's been doing. They settled things with um, with Philips. Nintendo. Philips, yes. And now they actually won the patent case involving the Wii console uh, on December 22nd. They won the patent case in uh, federal court in, uh, in Seattle. Um, Judge Robert S. Lasnik found the Nintendo's Wii system does not infringe two patents asserted against Nintendo by Ultimate Pointer LLC. <laughs> um, Dope. Yeah. Um, they, the, the judge claimed that the, uh, the, 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 the um, P- Ultimate Pointer's claims invalid and decided at the result that there was no trial needed. Boom. Bang. That was a good way for Nintendo to end the year. And they also saw announced that there was another patent law lawsuit that also uh, that they won. Yeah, and they won another lawsuit from Creative Kingdom's patent. Now, th- this was bought by the International Trade Commission. Uh, the court affirmed the earlier findings by the ITC that Creative Kingdom's patents are invalid and should have not been issued to uh, Creative Kingdom's because they tried to claim more than the company invented. Uh, Creative Kingdom's had asked the ITC to block importation of Nintendo's Wii and Wii U systems. Look at that. Everyone's trying to get at Nintendo these days, huh? Yeah. They're uh, they at least uh they at least they won those. <laughs> yeah, you won those. Yeah, I mean, the other ones are just kind of like rough, but damn, at least they got those going for them. Small steps. Exactly. Baby steps. Baby steps, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Stuff that happened last year too with Nintendo. Um, the Amiibos. Uh, even um, uh, Reggie Phil's and me had to talk about the Amiibos and the rarity of them. Uh, Phil's and me just had to say uh, about this, uh, about the rare stuff. Uh, it's a new business for Nintendo, and it's still trying to balance supply and demand. With high, uh, about the high demand amiibo, amiibos, we're looking hard at addressing that opportunity. Uh, uh, we don't want to leave any opportunity uncovered with these figures. So basically, yeah, nah, we, we messed up. We got to make money. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, after that first wave... Did they not? They still didn't learn. Yeah, well, because I mean, they released their second wave, and um, I've never seen Little Mac, I've never seen Pit. Yeah, uh, I've seen some Pits. I've never seen Pit. Um, but uh, I I think it's almost also because too they had the first and second waves already done. I think third and fourth waves are going to be a lot more amiibos. In all honesty, but I think the first two waves, I think they just could have done that one wave, but they wanted to break it up. I think they're already done, and that's why uh, they just released it with such a limited uh. A well, limited uh, release. I hope so because there's a lot of figures coming out in these next couple waves that I'm really liking. I'm really interested in. I'm really feeling it. Um, like <laughs> DDD, they just announced Ness in, in the the fourth wave coming yes. out. Yes. Which Ness is my homeboy. He's my OG. Been yeah, using him since '64. Let's talk about that next year. <laughs> Get it? Nah. Well, we'll talk about that later. Of course. But uh, now, I'm just am- saying. Amiibo talk. Um, if you want to talk about sales, we do have sales figures for uh, Amiibo for just one. Uh, company from Best Buy. Um, they're tied with actually the Disney Infinity figures. So, uh, like, uh, as far as the numbers, they never really uh, uh, gave that out. But uh, as far as the um, the actual percentages of, of Best Buys um, in the U.S., uh, 36% Amiibo, 36% Disney Infinity, and 28% Skylanders. But I also think, too, that it's because Skylanders has been around for so long that I think the sales are gonna be st- like uh, like dying down a little bit, but a- in all honesty, like but uh, the, the Disney Infinity stuff is ju- also because too people just still love Disney and all the kids are Disney kids nowadays. I I don't know where that came from, but it's uh it, it it's it's selling pretty even with Disney, and I guess they're doing something right they're, if they're right on right on par with them. Like what can I say? People like uh, little figures that do stuff. Yeah. Uh, what it broke down to looking at this uh, Gama Sutra article, um. Was the fact that yeah, it sold a lot, um, and uh, let me see. In just three weeks, a hundred uh, seven hundred and ten thousand Amiibo toys um, were selling. <laughs> That's three weeks. Damn. Wow. Yeah, and that figure that I gave out the thirty six percent that was as of uh, twelve fifteen fourteen. So think about how much more or less everything's happened from there. It's crazy. Yeah. And also, they talked about how the scarcity is boosting uh, Amiibo sales. So, crazy enough, you know, people are like, oh, it's going to be rare. Might as well buy it now. Yeah, right? That's uh, my friend and I. We went on an Amiibo hunt. <laughs> I, w- I want to go on some Amiibo hunts, man. We didn't um, really come up with too much, but hey, it was fun. Uh, yeah, the journey. It, was. it was. It was a group yeah. of us. We all, we all went out for some. It was fun. Let's talk about Smash a little bit from last year. 
Um, Sakurai had a lot more interviews about Smash and what he uh, had to say about it and talked about and, and stuff like that. Uh, he was asked about the, you know, the, the roster, uh, Sakurai going on about Greninja. Um, for example, Greninja, even before his name was decided, I received several illustrations. I took them home in an evening and around midnight, I already done all his actions, normal moves, special moves, and pose pictures and sent them around asking, what do you think? <laughs> uh, the person who interviewed him, that's incredible speed. Uh, <laughs> by the way, when deciding on Smash characters to use, what are you looking for into unreleased new games? At the very beginning, I did that. This is uh, this time our project proposal is dated May 2012. At that time, all characters were decided already. Then, as production moves on, we say we don't we won't put that character in and cut a, a low priority characters. Makes me interested. Who did they cut? Well, um, obviously Mewtwo. No, was, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but uh, talking about almost cut characters, Bowser Jr. was almost cut. Uh, we're all wondering all the time which characters will be in. Uh, this is the uh, the interviewer asking him. And then the longtime heroes are announced just like that. We're wondering if uh, this is the right way to announce them. Uh, let's see. After all the planning on including so many characters, in the end, this pace of announcing them was enough. Each and every character has fans. We wanted to drop as few as possible. So in order... Uh, in, in order of which character was priority, the characters that don't have a new title coming up will have an overwhelming disadvantage. Even characters that we ended up including could have been left out of development had progress if development had progressed differently. Even if one former character is left out, for the fans this is a huge thing. On our side, we are recreating characters from the previous title and keep on adding more. So the word reduce doesn't uh, is not appropriate. Uh, there are cases where we simply could not make it in the end, but as a whole, we did a good job, and I think people at Bandai and Namco did a great job. We had discussions on giving up something many, many times. Bowser Jr. was on the brink of being cut, but the staff said we'll do our best, and we made it. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. You know, it's just like yeah, you know, I know some people Lucas. who like Bowser. Yeah, well, because when's the last time you heard of an Earthbound game? Yeah, exactly. Ness, <laughs> but Ness, he's one of the OG. He's one of the original original characters in the first game. You can't cut him. Yeah, but you were going on about Bowser Jr. No, yeah, and I have a lot of friends who are so happy Bowser Jr. is in the game because they like playing him. Mm -hmm. I personally couldn't care less. Yeah, I don't play him. Bowser Jr. is all right. Not gonna lie, he's actually a pretty good character. But um, Greninja was almost cut too, wasn't he? Um, no, he uh, Sakurai just said that he had him right there from the jump. Oh, because I thought that we well, read something earlier that said he was almost cut. Well, I don't uh, actually, I, I don't remember that. Oh. But I, I would, I would say maybe. But then again, too, you always, they always wanted to include newer Pokemon every time they did the game. Like every Smash game had this newer Pokemon that was hot. But it's funny though, because uh, the game they had the roster decided before X and Y came out. Yeah, which Greninja is one of the most popular Pokemon from the, from X and Y. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that Sakurai knew that was going to happen. Yeah, he, I remember he talked about that where he said eh, it could, like it was coincidence that it happened and it was great that it happened. I yeah. remember him saying something along those lines. Because that, that worked out in their favor a lot. Yeah, so... Um, but, so uh, now, no, uh, I want to go back to characters for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the Ice Climbers. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people, including myself, who are incredibly mm. salty that the Ice Climbers got cut. Well, that's because of the hardware, the 3DS. But then again, BS, because come on now, you have a Wii U. Everybody everybody ditched the 3DS. I don't. Th I mean, straight up, like before we recorded the show, we played the 3DS version of Smash, and this was the first time I played the 3DS version. I think maybe the first time since the new year, I think I might have played the, 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 the 3DS version of Smash maybe once. And that was like in the first week of New Year's, which, yeah. you know, give it takes Friday, Saturday. Like, think about that. Yeah. And they haven't touched it till like about today when we're recording the show. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, yeah. I, I, it's really been all about Smash 4. And a lot of people have done that, too. Uh, a lot of people just abandoned the 3DS version of Smash, which, I mean, hey, Nintendo got their money. They don't care, right? Yeah, right. But, but I, I don't know. Yeah. But even then, though, it's like Rosalina Luma, to me, is just as complex as the Ice Climbers. But think about how uh, the size wise. Um, the ice climbers are the same size. So Rosalina's tall and, um, you know, the Luma's shorter. So the coating and everything else is, and the texturing and everything that's got to render is probably different, especially with know, the size like, of Luma. I don't know. Luma has their own, Luma has its own abilities and stuff. Yeah. Nana just kind of followed what you did. Yeah, which is probably why it takes up a lot of uh, memory doing that. I don't know. I think I think they could have made it happen. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know, honestly. Hopefully that DLC pack, but so far only Mewtwo only is Mewtwo's DLC. Only Mewtwo's been announced, guys. I hope people buy it up just because even if you don't use Mewtwo, buy it so we can get more DLC. How about that? Yeah. About uh, working with Bandai Namco. 
Uh, so Mark, Sakura was talking about uh, Kid Icarus. Um, he said they assembled people from several places, but we experienced problems and had regrets with that. I had to do interviews with other HR duties, which amounts to a lot of work and time. Obviously, everyone has different levels of experience and different ways of working, so bringing everything together was difficult. To solve this problem, we thought it would be better to have one single company work for us, so we chose to work with Bandai Namco Games, who produced Tekken and other games. When, when thinking about a Japanese company that can make a large-scale fighting game, this was there was only this one company. It would be quite difficult for our other companies, I think. That's crazy. They didn't even look to, uh, towards Capcom's way, even though it's like they looked at Capcom and went, Mega Man, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, hell, they, they worked together to make some of the uh, older Zelda games, so who knows, but... Um, as far as the results, Sakurai, rep- uh, you know, if he was content, the uh, person interviewing, are you content with how the actual production went? I learned how to hold it in and not go to the toilet. It was quite far away from my seat. <laughs> oh man. Sakurai, please. <laughs> Sakurai, please. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, to give credit, this, uh, article, this, this, um, interview was done by Nintendo Dream. This was in the December 2014 issue preview where they basically put out most of the interview. One last thing about uh, Sakurai, they talked about uh, the one of the most hated uh, parts of the Smash Bros. We use Smash Tour, um, which I started playing a lot recently just to get some stages. But it's good to get items, and it's probably easier than you know than uh, Smash Bros. But Smash Bros. was a lot of fun. Like here's the inter- the interesting about this uh, this quote that's coming up because he talks about uh, the way the player ends up in one game, and this is the way they didn't want to make the game. It's weird. Uh, the more deeply people play Smash Bros, the more they start seeking higher levels of precision in that gameplay. At the end, this leads them to prefer Final Destination stage with no obstacles, no items, certain stock settings, etc. We did try to make this game so you can play it the way you like along these lines, but the appro- but that approach does veer a little from the original intention of the design. Smash Tour is the result of us pressing forward in our original direction. Having a lot of challenging elements in the field leading to totally unpredictable situations. Our inspiration here wasn't to copy the board game format um, and the rules. Don't follow those lines. The gameplay is designed with Smash Bros. in mind. Hmm. So it's set up so all, the, all sorts of things can happen in a short time, making it impossible to guess who will win. It's very Smash Bros.-like approach, and while it can be unfair at times, like any board game, it's built for people who can laugh all, all that off as they enjoy the experience. I'd like you to gather your Smash Bros. pals together and try out the mode, maybe playing three games to start. We engage in multiplayer during our lunch breaks, and these days we play Smash Tour every time. It's fun in part because it's okay to an extent if the players involved are very wi- are very widely in skill. Yeah, and you know what? It's one of those things that, to me, Smash Tour, you say it's one of the most hated modes. Yeah. That's because you read a lot of Reddit, and Reddit's a lot of like, <laughs> Red, like Reddit's a lot of like, you know, Final Destination, Fox only, no items kind of mentality. Whereas I feel like Smash Tour is probably a big hit for just the casual players who just play the game to play the game. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I I mean, I only have played Smash Tour by by myself, and it's just like, eh, I played a game with my girl, but then again, she doesn't really get the concept of Smash, so yeah. she's kind of like whatever, but. Um, you know, to actually p- like play the game, it's like okay, it's a cool way to get items. That's it. Like, yeah, but you know, it's just one of those things too that you, we are like five percent. Yeah. The people who are fun of this nation, no items, box only. Like that's two percent of that's like five percent of Smash players. Yeah. There's but the, the rest the, of the world who play Smash for what it is. Well, I I play Smash both ways, so I'm I, probably I, in a lower percentage than that. Oh, I hate. I hate items, dude. I can't, I can't do. It. I hate items. I don't like moving stages. I just, I am Final Destination Fox only, no items. All right, I'll admit that. All right. But to everyone else, there's a lot of people who like Smash for the items, for the mm-hmm. for the moving stages. They find that stuff fun. For fun, exactly. So to them, Smash Tour is probably like the best thing in the world. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll say that straight up. I don't like it because it has be, just because of what it is. It's uh, not my game. All right, so going to Pokemon stuff, there was a Pokemon hack that you can play as the bad guy. I don't know, dude. I wanted to get your thoughts on that one. I didn't play it or anything, but uh, it sounds pretty cool. I've yeah. always wanted to be the bad guy. Yeah. I like um, bad guys better than good guys. Yeah, they replaced the main character's model with that of Maxi. That's the main villain in uh, Omega Ruby, uh, where you basically, you know, just walk around the whole towns like as Maxi. And, uh, you know, you can uh, throw the Pokeballs like, uh, like Maxi. So there's no, uh, you know, 
Yeah. Different, you know, differences. You just kind of like do it. It's pretty dope. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of hacks going on with Pokemon too. So it's kind of funny that I, that ended up that way, going down that route. I think someone made one for X and Y too, where you can be a Team Flare thing. That's funny. And they made another one. Um, they made a hack for I think it was Leaf Green Fire Red, where you get to play as Team Rocket, mm-hmm. and instead of getting what? a start, instead of getting a starter, you get like a Rattata, nice. and you have, and that's your that's your starter is a or Rattata or a Zubat or something. You're like, damn it. But yeah. uh, it's pretty dope. I, I like wanna, hacks. They're more, they're more fun. I wanted to talk about this last thing with hacking. The same guys who have uh, been hacking Mario Kart, um, you know, Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart 8, um, they have actually tried to do something else on the Wii since now, you know, the Wii is kind of like almost a dead system, even though you can kind of play it on the Wii U right now. Um, these guys have actually tried to hack uh, the game so you can play multiplayer online. So... Um, Instead of uh, just playing with your friends, like they used, for example, uh, New Mario Brothers Wii. And um, they showed on two different TVs and two different Wiis uh, online uh, with some coding and stuff that they played uh, a game that's not supposed to be, um, that's not supposed to play online, playing online near each other. And I saw, and I saw a stream later that they, um, they were playing with people from Germany because I think they're from the UK and, uh, you know, Germany, you know, of uh, some distance. And I, I think it was actually pretty well. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Especially because the Wii's online network is shut down anyway. Yeah. So, and the fact that these guys could do it, it pissed off a lot of people because people were like, well, see, why couldn't Nintendo do that? <laughs> well, again, you know, Nintendo had to shut it down for cost reasons. You know, not that many people were playing the Wii anymore. Well, no, not not. I mean, just that. But when they when the Wii was alive, oh yeah, like why couldn't they just do it then? Because they didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> like deal with it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, other gaming stuff that happened. Um, there was a Call of Duty DLC that was announced last year. Uh, that stars John Malkovich, Rose McGowan, and Bill Paxton. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Is are we talking about a video game or are we talking about a movie? Right. It was teased with no visuals. Uh, that in. In the new year, they have to come out with some uh, with the new uh, pictures and everything of that DLC with the new uh, actors. But we'll talk about that in the new year. Yeah, <laughs> um, GTA Five on Christmas had a uh, around Christmas time. They they gave people the ability to throw snowballs, and uh, snowballs actually were deadly. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we're to a point where people just got together and throw snowballs at each other and got killed. Like people got wasted from uh, just snowball throws. Just yeah, being called to bite them. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and not only that, I think someone on lo- someone actually uh, robbed a store with a snowball. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. But talking about Christmas time, something major happened in Christmas, which of course we have to talk about because it happened last year. Christmas Day, a, p- a couple of guys wanted to be Grinches and uh, knock off the entire PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Network. Funny. Yeah, they used uh, DDoSing to do it. And um, it, it, it was out for at least a good week or so, Mo- both networks. They weren't really fully recovered. And I still don't think they're even recovered now. I think they're still having problems even to this point. Some people like to watch the world burn, man. Yeah, that's true. Well, I think they were quoted as saying that they, uh, well, of course, I guess for what reason they did it for. It's the lulls, of course. Oh, they did it for the lulls. Of course. Yeah, I remember reading it. They did it for the lulls and also they did it because, you know, they're they're preventing all the kids from going online the, the, with the Xboxes and Playstations their mommy and daddy bought them for Christmas. Mm-hmm. It's just a dick move. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just a dick move. I think it's kind of funny. It, it can be, but I mean, like, you know. But then again, too, it also, I think they were trying to also make the point, too. I think they, they get the interview, not because it was also because of the lulls, but I think they try to show that they try to go against the companies and saying, oh, you know, we don't want all online games or something like that. Because a lot of games are online now. So if you don't have online capabilities, you can't play most of the games you got. I mean, so, I mean most of the, a lot of the games do have single player story mode. There's, yeah. no, there's no game that's, well, maybe, I don't know. What about Destiny? Does Destiny have a single player? I don't even know. It'd be I don't, I don't know if it to. does, but I know every almost every other game does. Mm. People like... The people don't talk about Call of Duty single player, but it is there because mm-hmm. it's just everyone's like, "Oh, Call of Duty just go straight online," but like there isn't a single player to that. There is a this uh, Assassin's Creed single player. There, there are single players to these mold- online games. People just don't play them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of them just go right online. They don't even care. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So and then it, it's just it's just bad, man. I mean, and it was funny because they didn't really touch Nintendo. <laughs> well, because who cares? 
I, I, I guess. Maybe either it's too hard to hack or it just would affect maybe five people. Exactly. Because... I'm like, you're going to affect seven people from going online and smash, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, yeah, really. Uh, so, I mean, that happened. But then almost, I believe it was New Year's Day. Um, they actually released, uh, arrested people in uh, the PSN attacks. Good. Yeah. Good for them. And I think more people are actually being arrested as, the, as the, this year goes on, too, funny enough. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's funny if you want to do this, but if you don't get caught, now you pay the price. Mm-hmm. I think that's like a five-year prison sentence. I believe so for somebody, yes. For one of them, yes. Uh, looking at the ahead of that story. Talking about some of the Microsoft stuff, um, because of some of the outages, uh, some deals were extended, like some of the PSN deals were extended, uh, some of the Xbox Live deals were extended, even Destiny's like a weekend vendors in the game Destiny, which, you know, you get stuff for the weekend. Even that was extended. There was a lot of things that was extended to accommodate, you know, some, some of the people going well, on. Well, you have to. If your network is down, you have to make up for it. Yeah. And, and it's funny because uh, some people were talking about some of the eShop was down, but I think it's probably because Christmas Day people were just downloading games anyway. Yeah, so. because, you know, Nintendo Network can only hold seven people at one time. <laughs> so when, six, when when eight tried to log on, it slowed down too much. Yeah. Uh, speaking, uh, going back to Nintendo and their online stuff, they actually killed something that I actually liked that I didn't realize had an end date of, you know, last year, December 31st. It was the Digital Deluxe promotion, which basically if you had the 32 gig um, Wii U to start when you got it oh, like uh, first run, it's for when it when it first came out, you got you got points basically, and basically whenever you got a game online from the eShop, it it shows itself as points, and with all those points that you gain, I believe it was like every 500 points or something like that, or five, five I forget how many points it was, five thousand, I don't remember what it was, but every time you reached the milestone, you got five uh five dollar gift card for you to use for free. Oh, nice. And that was awesome. I remember I had actually, I actually bought a game, like I think the New Year's Eve <laughs> to actually get my last deal. Cause I had, I had like, I had like, uh, what amounted to like, like $13 like, dollars to spend to get like my next $5. And I was like, okay, what game's 15 bucks? <laughs> like, yeah. and I bought a game, uh, for the Wii U. And then I got the $5 the day after. Cause, okay, now that it's over, you know, for, for New Year's Eve, from here on, I think you have until April first to uh, spend the money. Yeah, and that's it to redeem those co- those, those the five dollars, and that's it. Interesting. Yeah. It's pretty uh, dope. Yeah. Um, other things about the Nintendo again, going back to that, the business side. Reggie is saying that it was taking a while for the Wii U to catch on because it takes time to um to make quality games. <laughs> Why didn't you have quality games made when you release the system? That's it. I'm. Um, gonna say that's exactly <laughs> what i'm saying like why couldn't that just why couldn't you release a system of quality games to start and not only that are you saying that the that the games that were released that uh, weren't uh, good yeah <laughs> like, uh, like are, 20- you, are you shitting on your games that you that were available when the console came out yeah seriously jeez reggie yeah seriously. could you be more insensitive uh here's the quote developing high quality games like this takes time and this was uh you know somebody asked them you know getting back his feet blah blah, blah. what took so long this and it takes time and it takes an investment of people's resources, and our focus on quality is really significant. Yeah, I would be mad if I was a developer who had a game out on uh, <laughs> release day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just said your game sucks. Yeah, yeah. Basically, even Nintendo's games. I mean, they had games. They had Nintendo Land, and they had Mario Brothers uh, Wii U, whatever. Let's see. Uh, and also, talk, Reggie talking about it, you know it, it, that Nintendo uh, Nintendo's uh, on uh, as a whole is rebounding. So, well, go. that's good. One other thing, Awada actually helped uh, get Super Smash Bros. Melee uh, to, you know, stores on time. Because apparently it was going to be late. Um, it, well, he, well it, the, the story basically goes like this. Here's him talking about it at f- his interview at 4Gamer. Um, uh, so, aha, I wonder if I was all right to admit this. Well, I guess the Provovir Statue of Limitations is up, so I tell you. But my actual last work on programming happened when I was working as the general manager of corporate planning at Nintendo. Uh, something happened, and the GameCube version of Super Smash Bros. didn't look like it was going to make its release date. So I sort of, I sort of did a code review for it. <laughs> and yes, we are talking about the GameCube one, Melee. Yep. Not like we're the Smash 4, you said it wrong. No, we're talking about Melee 13 years ago. Yep. At the time, I went to HAL Labs in uh, Yamani, Yamanashi and... and and was the la- acting head of debugging. So I did the code review, fixed some bugs, read the code, fixed more bugs, read the long bug report from Nintendo, figured out where the problem was, and got people to fix those. 
All in all, I spent about three weeks like that, and because of that, the game made it out on time. Boom. Dang. <laughs> there you go. Sakurai was slacking. <laughs> no, Sakurai was working on the game by himself. <laughs> yeah, no, that's also <laughs> true too. That that was his that was his baby. That was the only that him and like three other people, and, and then Awada came in like, all right, here you go. Here are some bugs. <laughs> all right, thanks, dude. I'm out. Yeah. That's it. I'm gonna run Nintendo now. Peace. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nah, was, that imagine imagine it happened like that. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a story, man. Yeah, cool story, bro. Resident Evil Zero is gonna be coming out. That was announced last year. Yeah, so that's interesting. Also, Resident Evil the uh the re- the HD remake of Resident Evil is actually um cross compatible on the PS3 and PS4. So there there's another bonus there for getting it on the PS4. Sweet. Um. Uh, and then our final stories we're going to talk about uh, PC stuff and uh, other countries China does not require region lock consoles uh, which is interesting hmm. so you can play uh, games from anywhere in China so nice. they didn't give them that restriction huh well, that's good um, which yeah. other countries did that <laughs> yeah well I mean the, the newer consoles the only console that's region locked is Nintendo so who knows what's going to happen there uh, which teasing our next story for the next segment of the show. I mean, Sony was supposed to come out this year in China, so who knows what happened there? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, something may have happened. Uh, there was a PC game uh, because we talked about this before, where uh, where um, where people get pirated games and uh, programmers put something in the game that prevents players from continuing in those pirated games. Like we talked about like Mirror's Edge where you would get slowed down to a point where you can't do anything and the point of that game is for you to run and jump across large distances. So if you don't have any speed, you can't do anything. Yeah. Um, and another game that basically had a pop-up where it was like, oh, I don't know what this is. Like, why does it say that? And, you know, him tweeting at the developer oh, that. Oh, Skullgirls, yeah. Yep. And the developer's like, yeah, that's because you have a pirated game, dude. Yeah, it's because you, you, you didn't buy the game. So um, this game... Um, it was it was posted on uh, NeoGaf, um, and the publisher Devolver has retweeted it as well. The user was playing uh, it was a puzzle game. Talos Principle was the game, uh, and this user was playing the, the the puzzle game, and they were in an elevator, and then they got stuck, and there was no way out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who uh, you know paid for the game was actually you know could get out the um, the elevator just fine, but apparently in this game they're just trapping the elevator. So. There you go. A fate worse than death. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then finally, from us and uh, the 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 uh, the, the uh, old year, is the fact that uh, on on December twenty third, thirty five years ago from that time, uh, PC gaming began. Wow. Yeah. Master I, race or what? <laughs> I actually did not believe that it was uh, actually that long ago. I mean, you know, home consoles are first, PC second. I actually thought PCs would have came first, but look at that. 35 uh, years. It's older than me. It's older than you. Yeah, it started with uh, the Apple II, uh, the Radio Shack TSR-80, and the Commodore PET. Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a different kind of computer, that was for sure. And, um, you know, it, it went on from there. The early games, like... But the problem was um, they, they had these computers, but nobody really knew what to do with them. So um, they kind of had some games. They weren't really the greatest of games. I mean, they may be some classics to some people. But uh, you know, most of them probably started off with uh, with uh, you know, word games. Cause I remember those, the games that were just uh, just text, text based games. Yeah. Eventually, they got to some graphics later. But I mean, it started off with something. And look at where look at where PC gaming's at now. It's well, one of the most the, the popular one. It is the master of all races. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it is at this point. Who knew? Especially with PCs being extra, extra, extra slow. And, like, load times were, like, ridiculous back in the days. I mean, even for back in the days, some computers were loading super slow. Yeah. And especially how it evolved where, you know, you would have to use the giant floppy disks or you had to wait for it to load to using the smaller floppy disks, multiple disks, multiple CDs to one DVD oh, to now. Don't, don't even remind me about, like, the multiple CDs for one game, please. <laughs> Those are the worst. Oh, the, the new generation has no idea what they're missing out on with multiple disk Stop games. Stop it. Oh man! No, I'm, that's that's pretty recent still. Really? There's yeah. multiple Quake, games. Quake Four was a four disc game. Uh, yeah, but you can just get that digital. Yeah, now you can. <laughs> but back back when it came out, I was in I know I was in high school because I I couldn't wait for it because I'd been playing Quake Three for so long, 
and Quake 4 was announced. I was like, I can't wait to play it. I went and bought it, and the, and the box was humongous because <laughs> it was a four-disc game. And I was like, are you serious? I didn't. I, didn't actually, I don't think I ever beat that game. And my first multi-disc game was actually Final Fantasy VII. And uh, I remember thinking, well, why does it have three discs? Why can't you just play with discs too and start from there? Like, oh, I don't Quake, get this. No, I'm saying Quake 4 wasn't my first multi-disc game. It's just, yeah, but it's, I, it's the one that I remember. I, the one I remember was my first one, which is that. Like, there was multiple ones after that, but I was just like, that's interesting. I, because I was always used to one cartridge with Nintendo. Like, yeah. everything was on one cart. That's it. If it didn't fit in that cartridge, well, it wasn't in the game. Yeah, exactly. I remember uh, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront. Two mm. was a multi-disc game. Yeah, it, it ha- I think it was like that early two thousands had a lot of multi-disc games for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, late nineties, early two thousands had a lot of Cause, multi-disc games because the graphics, the graphics were like uh, improving like crazy. Too strong for the hardware. Yeah, basically. Well, not too strong for the hardware, just way too much. Too the, much for the disc for yeah. one disc. Yeah, basically. And what now, do- now they kind of know what to do because it's like, all right, if you want another disc, maybe, but um, there's like you know, a hard drive you have. <laughs> you don't yeah. really need discs anymore. Yeah, yeah, we're old. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but that's it. That happened last year. That's uh, that's our first uh, show. I hope you all enjoyed our uh, disorganization and trying to explain what the hell happened from when we lasted our show to the end of the last year. It's what we do. It's what we do. Uh, but uh, the, the stuff for this year will be more organized, separated, of course, by the usual topics that we have, and uh, a few discussions on certain topics, and we'll get to them. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah.